Hello. Today I'm going to test out my new USB microscope and solder pins onto a few of these little Arduino nano boards. Cheap Chinese knockoffs, but they do the trick. Um, it's going to be my first time trying solder under this thing, so we'll see how it turns out. I already started soldering before I realized I didn't have my microphone set up correctly, so I restarted. Uh, I have two of the pins on there. The solder I'm using is a 15, sorry, 25 thousandths of an inch. As you can see in the picture there, it's very, very small. So it's the first time really I've been doing, trying to solder under under this microscope, so uh, please bear with me if I do something silly here. It's sitting on top of a piece of, um, not breadboard, but uh, green uh, board that is meant for, for prototyping circuits. Do that to keep the the uh, pins relatively vertical while I while I solder them. I'm not sure how well it's going to work, but I've tried it before in a breadboard. It ends up melting the breadboard a little bit, so I'm going to try it a different way this time. Prop that thing up on a screwdriver a little bit. Okay. And you see it's kind of, it's hard to see in that picture, but it's kind of hopped up a little bit there. So now it's now it's down properly. So I'm going to <coughs> actually push down a little bit while I do this so I can try to get it on there properly. That might hold. Get another pin there before I forget. I think it might, might it be able to hold it in the right correct position. It's doing an okay job. Okay, now I should be able to get the rest of it. Oh, maybe not. Looks like I still need to have that thing up on a screwdriver. Okay, let's do some on this side. Hold it together. Not exactly, it doesn't have to be exactly precision soldering here, so as long as it connects all the pins and doesn't short circuit anything and they're straight when I'm done, I really don't care too much if they look beautiful. I'll go back and show you what it looks like a little bit better focused after I have it all in place. This thing is a pretty hard thing to focus, so... we got to find a way to do this more efficiently. That's okay. First time for everything, right? Yeah, that's one side. And I started on the other side already to so I can kind of hold it in place. Push this thing back to the board here in a second. So I already have a few of the pins done here. See, they did a wonderful job of creating the boards here without cutting the cutting our connections. Some of the pins are actually cut off right, sliced off right to the hole. You can see it in here. The, the edge of the hole is gone. So, eh, whatever. As long as it's electrically connected and solid, it shouldn't really matter. And with the amount of solder we have there, yeah, that should hold it. It's not going to be a problem.
Unlike previous ones where I actually put the ISP connector on. Which I'll show you in a minute. I don't know where it goes. I don't think I can put it on these boards because I haven't been using them at all. These last two pins that I'm going to solder. Yeah, so the ISP connector is over here. It's a six pin, two by three connector. I don't think I really need it right now. And if I need it later, I can always put it on. So here's the end result. You can see on the side, let me flip this thing up. Basically, here's what we were actually getting on there. Make this focus better. There we go. Over the edge, so. I had these poking through the, the green board you can see below it. So we can get them. Yeah, those are pretty straight. So you can see on the top, that board over there. So, there's our soccer job. The discoloration you see there is from the flux in the solder. Um, it, it leaves a little bit of color. You, you can clean it off with isopropyl alcohol, but for board like this I'm not going to bother that much. You basically take isopropyl alcohol and, uh, and uh, basically a toothbrush and you can scrub all that stuff off there. But for the amount that there is there I don't think it's really worth the trouble. So here's the second one. Set the same way on the same little board. Just going to set it there. Uh, oh yeah, there's the process, process around the, on the Wii board. So, Atmel at Mega three three twenty eight P A U, little tiny little thing. Works very well though. And these are about the smallest, one of the smallest boards you're ever going to be able to find for the election run Arduino stuff. Um, they're tiny, which is kind of what I wanted because you know I was going to lay it out right on the board myself, but in the end, these things are cheap and buying the parts to actually put all the stuff on the board ends up being not a whole lot cheaper than just using somebody else's pre-made board and taking the time to solder these pins onto it and put a matching connector on the board Oops, going the wrong way. There we go. so it's worked well for me so far so and that's my general plan for a lot of my little boards, which you'll see if I ever show them. Um, where are we? Is there to get A6? What's it made out of? Oops. So the pin numbers are being numbered by the on the silk screen are, are numbered by the, the convention of Arduino convention, not the processor convention. So the A pins are the analog, the ones connected to the analog, the A to D part within the chip. We have the five volt, the reset. It's actually an input to the board. But it also generates its own reset on the board, so you can actually use that to reset parts on the, whatever board you plug this into. And the ground and the five volts is also output of the board or input. They have a a diode on the bottom, which I found out the hard way because I blew it on one of the boards. Um, there's a diode on the bottom that um, connects the five volt pin that you see here. Uh, with the 5 volt coming off the USB connector. And the problem is I had a small short on the circuitry connected to the board. And uh, the amount of current that it was trying to draw through that diode was more than the diode is supposed to draw. So it blew up. 
sacrifice itself for the team uh, to get the short circuit by releasing the magic smoke. It was not very pleasant. Uh, but the board still works. It just, you can't use, you can't power it off of the, the USB anymore, which is annoying because that's usually how, when you're first starting off debugging, that's usually how you're powering it is off the USB. So that particular one is, needs fixing. I need to replace a diode on it. But anyway, so yeah, the the 5 volts on there is actually a, both an input and an output, depending on how you're using it. The V in, which was next to the ground that on the side that it is finished, is meant to be a high voltage, well, high, uh, it's like 9 volts ish input that it puts through a regulator on this board um, and generates the 5 volts locally. Oops, I just went right off camera, didn't I? I knew I'd do that eventually. Sorry about that. It's got in a groove. I wasn't watching my screen. There we go. The, the, the D ones are all the digital oh, outputs, inputs. Um, some of these are pretty much tied down in use. D10 through D13, for instance, where I'm soldering right now, is the SPI bus. The D10 being the chip select, D11 being, oops, get that back in the screen. D11 I, is, I think it's in, out, like Mosey, Miso, and its clock is over in D13, I believe is what it is. Um, the 3.3 volts you see there is uh, an output of the serial chip that's on the back, and it should not be used to power anything significant. But it's it's a regulated output from the serial chip, which is that Chinese knockoff there. Um, <laughs> most of the originally the Arduino's all came with uh, the FTDI chips. But apparently somebody came up with a much cheaper mechanism of doing it. Uh, these CH340Gs, the only way you can get a, a data sheet for them or a driver is to download them from China. So they work, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That's why this particular board is so cheap, actually. And over here, you can see, I believe it's this one right here is the the diode that I blew on one of the boards. Not terribly difficult to replace. So it's either this one or this one next to it, but I think this one here is the capacitor. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, it's one of these two. Easy enough to find if I find the board because it's um, very, very obviously smoked and uh, melted. <laughs> um, yeah, these boards don't have very much on them. A little bit of circuitry on the bottom. It's got a get the light right on it to be able to even read it but there you go I guess that say it's a oscillator for the the serial port I think but I'm not sure what it is four megs it's really hard to see Sure. I mean, it looks like a little tiny oscillator can. Really hard to tell. And over here, you got the. That would be, I believe, that's the linear. Yeah, five volt linear, um, drop it, uh, low drop it. Uh, linear regulator to make the five volts from whatever input you got. You can see the pins that I put on there. On the top. Got the ISP, the in-service programming, which I don't use. I just program it over USB. You got four LEDs. You got one for receive, one for transmit, one for power, and then the one marked L is just a generic LED. It's actually connected up to D13. So anytime you, anytime you flicker the, the um, 
SPI port that light flickers, LED flickers as well. But normally you don't notice it because the uh, SPI is so so fast compared compared to our vision. Um, you got a reset switch, another can. I don't know what frequency that thing is either. I mean that's for the processor, which means it's probably an eight or a sixteen. I don't remember which it is. Anyway, get your cute little processor. And then you get your USB. And that's it. That's a, all that for. I think you buy them. I think I'm going to buy them. It's like about three bucks a piece. Three of them for, for ten bucks. Anyway. And that is the piece of slate tile that I'm soldering on top of. So my, bo my board doesn't get. I mean, my desk doesn't get all warm. Under that, I've got a, a granite tile, black. But it seemed to have better contrast on the slate, so I put the slate in. Anyway, that is all for now. Um, I'm sure I'll have some more stuff soon.